Hey everyone, welcome back to the Gives in the Bank Recruiting Podcast brought to you by BuckeyeScoop.com. I'm Mark Givler, joined by Bill Green as always. The Scoop 100 countdown continues uh, today. We are in five-star territory now. We, we released our first couple of five stars in the last episode. This episode will be entirely uh, five stars, so 10 new five stars to talk about. Um, a lot to talk about here with Ohio State. We got a, we got a good bit of Ohio State flavor here. I won't give it all away right off the jump, but um, you know, if you're an Ohio State fan, you're going to want to tune in for pretty much the entire uh, episode here because we have a lot to talk about. Uh, uh, some some interesting developments here, in the, actually, in the last couple of weeks that that made this grouping of ten even more interesting. If you're an Ohio State fan, so um, going to be very interesting here uh, to kind of go through some of these guys. Um, first guy on the list, and we're at number twenty right now, uh, number twenty overall, Josh Connerly Jr. out of Seattle, Washington, offensive tackle. Uh, this is a guy I know Bill was very high on. Um, you know, fits. We, we talked about Kelvin Banks a little bit in the last episode uh, as a five-star tackle. I, I see this guy very similarly, high upside, very uh, athletic, kind of uh, exactly what you're looking for from a physical standpoint, um, and a long-term developmental guy that, that could be really, really good uh, if he hits his ceiling. Bill, uh, your thoughts here? I know this was a guy you, you kind of wanted up, up in this range. Yeah, this is a great – D or O tackle class is we, we talk about every episode, you know, and, and there's years, this guy could be the number one O lineman in America. I mean, not this year with some of the guys ahead of him, but you know, there are so many offensive tackles in this class that have length. They've got great feet. They've got a great frame. And this guy is a, another one of them. You know, if you're a, you know, a top elite team this year and you're not coming out with a, with a high end offensive tackle, you're doing something wrong because there's a ton of them out there this year. So the class is filled with them. I think this kid's going to stay home and go to Washington and probably he should have a great career if he stays healthy. I mean, there's nothing not to like with Connerly. He's, he fits the bill. Everything I'm looking for in an O tackle, he has. Yeah. It seems like he's going to stay out West, probably Washington. Um, yeah. And, and you know, these all the, the we kind of do bag on Pac-12 here and there, but like that that conference has produced a lot of offensive tackle. It's it's a passing league, and so that's a good that's a good spot. I mean, if you're if you're trying to be a, a left tackle, I mean, so there's a lot of that, that conference has produced a lot of guys. Uh, even recently, when the, when the league maybe as a whole has been down. So, um, yep, another another super athletic tackle prospect. Um, all right, we got a quarterback coming up here at 19, and uh, this is we talked about this range where a lot of these quarterbacks are very tightly bunched, but we did go five-star here on Walker Howard, LSU commit um, out of Lafayette, Louisiana, St. Thomas Moore high school. Um, you know, again, we've talked about this. How do we separate one quarterback from the other? You know, what do you see in Walker Howard? Yeah. I, I, I thought that group behind Quinn Ewers, they were all pretty similar and it was hard to kind of differentiate between them, but I do like this guy. A little bit better than the ones below him. You know, he's going to LSU. Um, the size is a concern, just an average size kid, you know, and so many of these guys are, you know, but he does everything well, does everything right. Um, you know, he could be a guy in that offense surrounded by those playmakers that they're going to recruit. And I mean, he could put up numbers that are huge because he can do everything. He can make every throw. He's athletic enough. You know, I wish he was 6'4". He's not, and that's okay. You don't have to be. But, you know, he could end up being a Drew Brees in that offense that just puts up numbers that are sick. So, you know, I liked him better than the guys that are beneath him. I thought he he stood out. So I think he deserves to be here. Yeah, I've got him just slightly <laughs> a hair above some of those guys as well. And um, I, I, I've got to get out of this thing with, you know, we talk about you know, the size isn't prototype, but what's prototype anymore? I mean, yeah, you yeah. know, Kyler Murray's running around, Russell Wilson, Drew Brees. I mean, yeah, I think you kind of almost have to get out of that, you know. Yes, it'd be great if everyone was 6'4", but there are a lot of guys now who aren't, 
you know, much more than six, one and a half, you know, out there, out there doing, doing things. So it's just kind of the new era of, of the quarterback position. So you do have to kind of get out of some of that. And I, I was able to do that here. Uh, I know you were as well. So, um, you know, I, I, I like the position here. I, I don't know that he's going to be like a top 10 guy. I, I think he's probably about where he's going to be, but um, you know, I think I, I was comfortable with him in this spot and yeah, there's some things there I, I like with, with the playmaking uh, that I think he brings to the table. Maybe some of the other guys who just weren't quite five-star guys this time around, I haven't quite seen that from them yet. Um, all right, moving up. Number 18, Michael Williams, freak defensive lineman. I don't even have him as an ender attack. He's having defensive lineman at Hardaway High School in Columbus, Georgia. Um, lists Ohio State at – no shot. Uh, not not coming to Columbus. Don't listen to any of that if, if it's out there. But um, really intriguing. I mean, size, athleticism, versatility. Bill, your thoughts? Yeah, he is so quick off the ball, and he can defeat blocks. You know, um, I liked him, and I agree with you the way you described him. I don't know where he plays. You know, he, he can play in a three four or four three. He can play inside. He can play outside. Um, you know, and he's not coming to Ohio State. I think he's going to Georgia, and I think they're going to put together an amazing – they've already – you know, they're going to – if they're not the number one class this year, you know, it'll be Ohio State, but those two are going to fight it out to the end. And, you know, you can never count out Saban, but I really like what Georgia's putting together in their class, and I think they're going to get this kid, and I would love to have him on my team. I love the versatility that you, you just figure out where you want to play him. He is not limited – to position you find a spot for him he'll play it for you so I, I like Michael Williams a lot yeah George is just uh loading up on on defense and then they don't have this kid yet but yeah they're that's yeah, that's probably that's the smart that's probably the smart bet is that he's gonna end up at Georgia but he's definitely gonna end up south um I like I said I wouldn't I think you know some of these kids they like Larry Johnson or they respect Ohio State's defensive line tradition but at the end of the day, they're not they're, they're not seriously considering uh, coming up uh, north. They, they're going to stay close to home. I think this is one of those kids. Um, now we get into the really interesting stretch here. This is going to be a, this is going to be a fun five or six uh, guys here. Um, first, you know, number seventeen is is Caleb Burton, uh, Ohio State wide receiver commit, Austin, Texas, Lake Travis. Um, you know, the varying opinions here. I think, you know, I think everyone thinks he's a top 50-ish guy. Some people have him, I think, in the top 10. Other people may be closer into the 30s and 40s. Coming off an injury, his, his sophomore year was so fantastic that I am, right now, I'm willing to roll with that and assume that it was today's medical treatment and technology and everything that you come back from an ACL. That's, that's my stance. Now, if he comes back and he's not as explosive and he's not, then, then, you know, you move him down, but I'm willing to roll with what he's put on film against really good competition. And what he did was, was phenomenal pre-injury bill. You know, what do you think about that? And, you know, did we, did we make the right move here or, you know, should we have maybe been more conservative kind of, how do you, you know, feel yeah. about all the injury stuff. Yeah, I'm a talent guy, you know, more than anything, and, and a production guy, and he he fits all that. I mean, I like him. I can see him as an outside guy, an inside guy. I can see why Heartline, you know, really likes him. The burst is unbelievable. So the knee injury, it wasn't one of those devastating, you know, there are different types of a ACL, different types of injuries where you can blow everything out, ACL, PCL, MCL, everything. And I, and I was told it wasn't, you know, that bad. It was fairly normal and he should come back better, you know, almost like the baseball pitcher that has Tommy John to come back throwing five miles an hour faster. There's no reason if he puts the time in that he won't come back as he was before. Now he's going to have to get stronger and that'll happen as he matures. Um, he'll probably be like uh, Smith and Najeg, but start off as a slot guy at Ohio State and eventually work outside um but i like the versatility and i know heartline loves that he loves those guys that he can play anywhere so 
you know, this guy's got a chance to be a great player in that Ohio State offense. You know, they're going to have quarterbacks, and he fits with the wide receivers, Garrett Wilson, Olave. He's right there with those guys. So he won't take a back seat in terms of talent. If he comes back from that knee injury, he's going to be a star. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of a Mecca Abuka in the way in similar, I think, physical profiles um, and then the versatility to play inside, outside. I, I think, um, you know, it's a great fit, I think, uh, for what Ohio State wants to do and for what his skill set is. And like I said, I we've seen so many guys come back from the stronger. I, I, I think you don't penalize him at this point. I think you wait and <clears throat> You make sure he comes back. You know, like I said, if, if if physical injuries take their toll on these guys, then you move them down later. But I to to do that now when we don't even we don't even know how he's responded, it would, I right. think would be silly. And you know, pre-injury, this is where he would have slotted. I mean, there's there, I don't think there's any debate about that. So that's that's what we did, and I I think that's fair. Um, next up, number sixteen. Uh, this, this is a boy, if Ohio state, if you, if you gave Ohio state uh, a list of maybe three or four guys, they'd love to land that are still out there. This guy would be on there. Uh, it's, it's Eni white, um, Imhotep charter school in, in Philly, uh, defensive end six, five, about two thirty. I know some people listen as a linebacker, Ohio state's recruiting him as a, as an edge rusher defensive end. Um, you know, first of all, I guess we'll talk about kind of the physical stuff. What do you like about him and kind of, you know, is he a tweener or can he be the pure defensive end that Ohio State would like him to be? And your thoughts on that? Yeah, and therefore three setup, he, he's perfect. You know, he's a blur coming off the edge. Um, he'll get stronger too, but I mean, I just love the, the, the first step. He's gone. You know, if you're no tackle, you better be on your game with this guy. So you know, and I think they kind of lacked that, you know, he, he might be a little more of what we thought Josh Harrison was going to be, or Zach Harrison was going to be, and he may still be, you know, but Eni White, man, that first step coming off the edge is amazing. And then you look at recruiting, you know, and everybody else sees it the way we see it. You know, you look at Bama, Florida, Georgia, Clemson, Ohio State, all the right people wanting. So, I'm not all that high on Ohio State getting him, but I know Alex Gleitman, you know, is more optimistic than I am. And Alex is a lot closer to that one than I would be. So I'm kind of going to defer, I think, on that one to him and go from there. Um, so Ohio State definitely has a puncher's chance. There's no doubt about it. And, you know, can Larry Johnson win this one? We're going to find out. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. You know, he just dropped a top eight. It did not have Penn State on it, which really um, kind of surprised me. You know, it wasn't so much that I thought he was going to Penn State, but to not even make a, a top eight uh, for, for really the, you know, probably the best guy in, in the state, that was a little surprising. You look at the list, it's very Southeast heavy, and then there's yeah. Ohio State. So Ohio State's a bit of an outlier on the list. But I also know they've been working this one for like two years now. They This is one guy. They did not move in this class. Larry Johnson did not really push for a lot of guys in this class early. He's, he's a very big on in-person evaluations. And uh, this was the one guy he's really like from starting, you know, 12, 18, 24 months ago has pushed for from day one. So I think, again, I think puncher's chance is probably the best way, as you said, is probably the best way to put it. Um Visit in June, that's going to be huge. Uh, yeah. uh, end of June, he's visiting. That, that, I think that's going to tell us a lot. I think we're going to come out of that weekend, and it's either going to be, oh, well, it's not probably not happening, or we're going to get a, a, a better sense of actually, you know, maybe maybe he's not going to go to the SEC. So um, that's going to be a big visit. Um, I think he's physically he's Jason Owe, but he's a much better player than Jason Owe was that that's the comparison I see. And I was able to watch Jason a little bit in high school and that's the type of athlete I think he is, but he, again, he's a much better football player. I don't think Jason Owe had no idea what he was doing at this point of his, of his high school career. Um, he was all, he was all, you know, measurables at this point. And, and white is, is not uh, very, very productive player. 
Um, but yeah, like you said, that, that, that first step off the edge is just unbelievable. So, um, yep, definitely a guy they would love to have. We'll see what happens in June. Um, maybe the more, this, this was not going to be that interesting of a, of a discussion, um, <laughs> maybe two weeks ago. Uh, but, now it is. Uh, number 15 is cornerback Will Johnson out of Michigan, committed to Michigan. Uh, longtime Ohio State uh, target, uh, player they very much wanted in the class. Um, Bill, some coach, gosh, more coaching shakeup in Michigan on the yeah. defensive staff. Uh, Linguist takes the, the Buffalo, Buffalo, right? The yeah. Buffalo job. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so that was a very short stay in Ann Arbor for him. Does this change things? I mean, does Ohio take it back into this? I think once he committed to Michigan, we thought, well, that's it. The, the kid that, you know, the legacy kid commits to Michigan, that, yeah. that's that. I mean, what, what do you think? Well, uh, I have always felt that there was a glimmer here. Maybe not so much on the dad's part, but the kid has a great relationship with Kerry Combs. And that kind of, and, and just Combs being the recruiter that he is, made me think there's a glimmer. Now, linguist leaving provides a little bit more of a glimmer. So instead of the window being two inches open, maybe it's four inches open now. And, you know, I think what's going to have to happen for Ohio State is that place is going to have to fall apart this year. And I think that can happen. I can see them going six and six this year or worse. I don't think they're going to be any good at all. And then how does Michigan look at that? You know what I mean? I think the Harbaugh contract, I think, is very school friendly. I think they can get rid of him with not a lot of money having to be paid out. And did they finally come to the point that Ohio State finally came to with John Cooper where enough's enough? It's not going to work. Okay, we tried. We've given it all we can with Jim Harbaugh and we're getting worse. We're not even staying the same. And the same wasn't where we wanted this program to be. So at that point, do they say, we need a Matt Campbell or someone like a Matt Campbell. We need a new start, young guy, new voice. Burn it down. Let's start over. This ain't going to work with tired, worn out Jim Harbaugh with a coaching staff, with guys coaching positions they'd never coached before. You know, I, I, I would keep Will Johnson – on that watch list. And I think he's an amazing player. We didn't even talk about him as a player. I mean, he's Richard Sherman. I don't know how he can be as smooth as he is for as tall as he is. It, it's really hard to do for those tall guys, those long legged guys to be that smooth. And I still could see him maybe playing safety. And I think he would be an unbelievable safety in that single high look that Ohio State runs. He would be unbelievable in that, but he can also be an unbelievable corner. So um, kind of rambled on this one a while. I would, I would keep an eye. I would definitely keep an eye on Will Johnson all the way into December. I would watch and see what happens there. And I think the Michigan play on the field, and it could really affect this if they have to move on from Harbaugh and tear it to the ground. Yeah, the whole thing has been so bizarre to me. It, the, the turnover with the assistant coaches, the amount of new coaches they've had to bring in, where some of those guys have been placed in terms of what they're coaching. The Harbaugh contract was bizarre. Um, I, <clears throat> make him take a pay cut, basically. Like it, it is, it's really odd. And I, yeah, I think if, if, and they, they have a tough schedule this fall. I mean, that's the other Definitely. thing. Definitely. They, they have a tough schedule. <clears throat> they got to be ready to go out of the gates or, or it's going to, you know, you don't, for them, you don't want things to snowball. You could get off to a tough start or something and the wheels fall off with all the turmoil and the coaching changes and everything you've had. It's going to be interesting to watch. I, I, I know this raised some eyebrows in Columbus. I, I, I do. I, I know this raised some eyebrows. I don't think anyone, you know, on Ohio state's end is, is thinking they're they're gonna definitely flip Will Johnson right now, but I, I think this maybe gave them a little more juice and motivation to keep at that, and then we'll see we'll see what that means. Um, you know, then I guess the question I would throw back to you is, 
if Michigan makes a change and it is someone like Matt Campbell and they do it quickly enough to have, you know, whether it's, you know, four weeks or six weeks or whatever it might be to wrangle in the recruiting class, does that hurt Ohio State? Because now, you know, the one thing I always say about coaches is new coaches can sell hopes and dreams. You can't, you can't call them out on things. They can, they can tell kids anything and you can't disprove it because there's, there's no, so you can, you can say, Oh, we're going to win five national championships. Well, you can't, you can't disprove that. They can kind of say whatever they want. Whereas, you know, the more established guys, if, if you're going six and six every year and you go and tell a kid, yeah, we're going to be, we're going to compete for national championships. Well, they're going to look at your track record and say, well, that's, that's not happening. So does that actually, you know, what's the right amount of chaos for Ohio state here? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm a relationship guy and, you know, I think the world of Matt Campbell and, and that staff, but I don't think the, the success of Matt and his guys is not, they're not quick, sharp salesmen. That's not them. You know, they develop relationships over time. So I wouldn't look at Matt and his staff as someone that comes in and just automatically turns Will Johnson's head. Those guys recruit over time. They build relationships slowly. Uh, I don't think it would happen. I think they burn that thing down at Michigan. I don't care who they bring in. You know, I, I think it helps Ohio State. I really do. Yeah. And it helps dad then right, <clears throat> to leave the state and say, look, you, you were burnt to the ground. I wanted my kid to go here, but I don't want him, you know, starting at ground zero when he can go down to Columbus, compete for national titles and go to the NFL. I couldn't risk that on your new program at Michigan just because I went here. I can't do that to my son. So, no, I think it helps Ohio State. That may be the key point is dad. Yeah. In, in, a, in a burn it to the ground situation, <laughs> that may be the key point there. Yeah. That, and that'll yeah, be I think so. Yeah, this got more interesting. You know, I, I again, I don't, I don't think we totally closed the door on this, but I, I think, you know, to see this happen already is a little um, eye opening. To yeah. see something like this happen already is a little eye opening to me, but. Um, all right, moving from a Michigan commitment to an Ohio State commitment. Uh, our number one player in the state of Ohio and number 14 overall player, C.J. Hicks, linebacker, Archbishop Alter. Uh, we've talked about C.J. a lot <laughs> the past year or so, um, but this is about – there's another – I don't want to give too much away. We do have another linebacker on the list, and he's, he's not, not too far far uh, off into the future so this is about the range where it's about as high as I'm about willing to go on a linebacker outside of the occasional there's been maybe maybe two or three guys over the years there's been um you know Justin Flo um Reuben Foster Jalen Smith there's been a few guys that I'm like okay yeah let's put that that guy's a, that's a top 10 player maybe even a top five player you know, we're at 14 here. This is about as high as I'm willing to go on a linebacker, which I think says a lot about what I think on CJ Hicks. But, you know, what are your thoughts on this and, and CJ and, and and just linebackers in general, you know, and how highly they should be ranked? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing him this year. Um, you know, and, and I don't think Jalen Smith is an outrageous comparison either. I love everything about him. Obviously, we've talked about him so much. Three down backer. You never take him off the field. You know, I guess this year what I want to see is I know he can play in space, you know, and I want to see how much they play him in space. Is he Isaiah Simmons? Which I'm not sure he's that. But is he that on the college level? You know, if he's Isaiah Simmons where you can play him in the back end, you can put him with his hand down, standing. You know, if he's that, then he's too low here. I mean, or he's, you know, he should be a top five player. So I want to see more of CJ, but I love everything about him. You know, he was a kid that after his, I mean, I think it was during his freshman year, he sent me stuff on Twitter and I, you know, I'm same as you, you know, we get kids sending us stuff all the time. And, you know, I look at everybody. Anytime somebody sends me something on Twitter, I'm going to look. I looked at that and it was like, oh my God, who is this guy? Like I'd never heard of him. <clears throat> then he started going to camps that summer and the offers started coming, you know, Miami you know, big time offers. And I knew that this kid was really going to be something. 
And that has continued. You know, that day that we saw him in Columbus a year ago at that Under Armour camp in the same group with Sean Murphy. And, and I had never seen Sean Murphy in person before. And I couldn't wait to see these two go head to head. And I was wondering, can CJ match up to this five-star kid? Yeah, it was about 10 minutes later. It was like, Sean Murphy cannot match up to CJ Hicks. Can't, can't run with him. Can't move with him. So, you know, CJ at 14 is good, but we may have to jack him up higher. You know, I want to see him this year. Can't wait to see him. I, I've said this before, but just might as well repeat at this point. I think the best thing about his development, the best thing for his development is he, he fairly early on, like sophomore year, had the maturity to realize what he was going to be. Because his freshman year, going into a soft, going into a sophomore year, he's telling me, oh, I'm, I'm a corner. You're corner not a, right. You are not a corner. Right. <laughs> you are, I've been doing this long enough to know you're not a corner. I don't know everything, but I know you're not a corner. And like the light switch went on, like salt, like mid to late sophomore year, where he's like, no, I, I'm a linebacker. And I kind of told him, I'm like, you're Darren Lee. Like, that's what you are. You're a, he, he's you're a, a three Darren Lee. You know? Right. Exactly. You're a bigger Darren Lee. You're a, you know, you're, you're a master. Right. You're, yeah, you're I mean, <laughs> you're at, you're at, physically where Darren was as a, you know, a sophomore in college as, as a, you know, going into your junior year of high school, but, but the, the realization of maturity to realize that and kind of move away from maybe what he wanted to be, I think has tremendously helped his development and continues to now that he, you know, he's really put a lot of work into becoming a linebacker. So. Well, another good thing about CJ is he was, you know, a back, a back end guy early in his career where, you look at someone like, I don't know, Gabe Powers. You know what I mean? If Gabe Powers does end up playing linebacker at Ohio State, which I don't think he will, but if he does, you're going to have to teach him coverage. CJ already is very comfortable playing in space. Right. You know, I think we stood together at one of those Ohio State camps and watched him work out as a corner, and it was happily kind of guiding him through that, and he was covering some unbelievable D1 wide receivers and running with them. I mean, so he knows coverage. So you don't have to worry about him. So, I, like I said, I can't wait to see him this year. I can't wait to the scrimmages or seven-on-sevens or two-a-days. I want to see him early. I want to see where CJ is because I don't think he's tapped all the potential he has yet. I think there's a lot of growth potential there still to go. Yeah, and as he picks up more mentally, because physically he can – do everything it's it's simply a matter of like mental overload of like okay i let me learn how to blitz let me learn how to pass rush let me coverage like there's so much you want to put on his plate because he can do all of those things but you have to you know bring him along at a, at a normal pace. you can't overload him right away so that's going to be fascinating to me too because i think he can do everything it's just a matter of spacing that out properly so you're not you know making him try to do everything at once but um phenomenal talent um and then here's our here's our next you know i kind of alluded to that a minute ago here's our next linebacker so cj and and this guy are, are 1a and 1b right now at linebacker um it's, it's uh, number 13 Her harold perkins out of cypress texas um total package size athleticism very, very willing against the run, um, can, can run around in space. I, I love this guy on film. I, 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 was, I was pretty blown away. It's one of my favorite uh, films I think I watched. Yeah, this, the highlight tape is off the chart, you know, with Harold Perkins. And he is a 4 5 40 guy, legit. So he's probably a little bit faster than CJ. Um, you know, CJ is explosive. This guy might be a little more explosive. I mean, He's amazing. I mean, he is a, he, a human highlight tape, you know. So I'd love to see him play. You know, like I would love to watch him in a full game. Like the highlight tape blows you away. So I'd like to see what's not being put on the three-minute highlight tape. So, but there's nothing not to like about this guy. You know, I think he's going to stay in Texas. He'll go to AM or Texas, and he should have a great career. But, I mean, the athletic ability, the speed, change your direction, off the charts. I mean, just so impressive. Yeah, one of those guys that, you know, I just talked about kind of, you know, Justin Flo, Jalen Smith. I'm, like, I, I'm not ruling out putting him into that category 
uh, down the road. I think, um, you know, again, this is about as high as I'm willing to go normally in linebacker. It takes kind of a special guy for me to go even higher than this. So two really good ones here that we just talked about in, in Hicks and Perkins. And we'll see if either one of them can can break me and get, get me push them for, for the top 10. Um, number 12. And, you know, it's funny. I just saw this guy. This The evaluation I had uh, – does not count in this. So uh, there's actually a new evaluation that's taking place. And I'm not sure it's going to change things for me too much, but uh, I did just see this guy, but that did not count into this list. We put this list together, um, you know, roughly two or three weeks ago. So um, that's, that's kind of where that stands. But uh, number 12 is uh, Travis Shaw, big defensive tackle out of Greensboro, North Carolina, Grimsley high school, just won a state championship. Um, Bill, uh, you know, I, I've been able to see Travis. I know Mick has seen Travis as well. Um, you know, you, you're going off tape. You know, what do you see uh, in Travis Shaw and, and your thoughts on on his ranking here at 12? Yeah, the, the tape shows an athletic monster, you know, and he, I mean, he is huge on tape and so athletic, so quick. I mean, he's got everything. I mean, usually when you look at D tackles, they're either the the quick guy off the ball, B.B. Landers types, or they're the big monsters in the middle that just, you know, run stoppers. Well, this guy's kind of both to me when I watch him on tape, you know, and, and it's hard to find guys like that. And we talked about another one on the last episode, you know, that Eddie Goldman type, you know, the just in the middle of the field that destroys the whole middle of the field, but can r- rush the passer as well. So, I like Travis Shaw a lot. Now you guys, you know, seen him in person, which kind of trumps my film, but man, everything I see on film is pretty freaking good. Well, it's, it's fascinating because he spent most of the day in the state championship game. He's a stand up edge rusher. They were standing <laughs> him up and uh, you know, then they'd move him inside on certain situations. He'd get into a four point stance. Then they'd put him as like a, they put him in three point stance. He kind of would play over a guard. It, oh man, it, the things he can do, I'll tell you who he reminds me of. And I think Eddie Goldman is a good comparison. The guy that immediately jumps out, I think it's probably more so because they play, play in the same part of the country uh, in high school is Dexter Lawrence. That, wow. that is how that is how Dexter Lawrence uh, was in high school and even a little bit of Clemson where they would sometimes move him out, you know, as an end. And, you know, big Dex is like 350 pounds. Yep. Shaw's about 310 yep. right now. But uh, that's that's the kind of guy I think he is uh, potentially, um, certainly with his athleticism and his, his talent level. Um, and and like big decks i think he's probably going to clemson um he's going to continue to he has continued to list ohio state i I don't think that's very real i think it's clemson or alabama would be my guess i think it's gonna be one of those two i think it's probably gonna be clemson um has not worried about official visits yet i believe now that he's won a state championship he will probably uh move more towards uh recruiting stuff here in the coming weeks but um, you know, don't be surprised if he lists Ohio State, but much like Dexter Lawrence, that was always a kind of a pipe dream. And I think that's going to be the same thing here. I think, I think Clemson, Alabama, you know, probably, you know, I, I don't see him leaving the South. Um, so we are on to our last player here for this episode before we get into the last episode, which will be the top 10. Um, but here we go again. It's it's another offensive lineman, Devon Campbell, Arlington uh, Bowie High School uh, in, in Texas. Um, here we go. Another athletic freak on the offensive line, Bill. Yeah, he is. Now, this guy, I, I think you could play him at tackle. Um, but I think he's more suited to be an interior guy. He would be so athletic you know, at, at guard. And I think he can play him at center too, but I wouldn't rule out somebody playing him at tackle in college. I mean, he's that good. He's all he lacks. He's not six, six, you know, he's a six, two and a half, six, three guy, but the footwork is amazing. And then you look at the recruiting and it's Texas, Bama, Oklahoma, that all makes sense to me. So I like this guy a lot. He's probably the best of the, what I consider an interior guy. Uh, but 
you could play him at tackle, and I think he could play tackle at the college level. Yeah, um, I haven't seen him in person the way I've seen the guy I'm about to mention, who I think there are some similarities to, but a little bit of Donovan Jackson. Yeah, yeah. In his game. Um, Donovan's probably actually another inch or so taller and, and maybe a little longer, which I think will help Donovan. I think Donovan could absolutely play tackle at Ohio State. And I kind of look at this kid in a similar way. I think, again, you know, maybe he has to play guard, but certainly has the feet, the athleticism, uh, the ability to play tackle if you need him to. I, you know, I think he's kind of a plug and play guy for me as well, which I don't say a lot about offensive linemen. Um, I, I think of the guys, you know, we've talked about so many tackles and, and linemen here in this top 25 or 30. I think maybe this kid's maybe the most ready. Um, you know, do you, do you want to have, do you ever want to play a true freshman offensive lineman? You know, probably not, but I think he's probably the, the most ready guy. Um, could he move into the top 10? I don't know. He might be one of those guys who just needs to be where he is, you know, somewhere in that 11 to 15 range. And that may be it because I don't know long-term does he, you know, when you start getting to the top 10, I think you're talking about, okay, I think you have to ask yourself, could this kid potentially be the number one pick in the NFL draft? I think that's what you have to ask yourself when you're talking about the top five or 10 guys in the country. So I don't know if that can be the case here. I think maybe he's probably, as about as high as we can put him, but um, unbelievable player. And uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think he's going to, he's going to stay down there somewhere, probably, you know, Texas, something like that, but um, really liked the film and, and looking forward to, to maybe seeing him in person this summer. We'll, we'll see how, see how things shape up with camps and everything. Um, all right. Well, that, uh, that is it. Uh, as I said at the beginning, these were all, you know, this, this whole list was five-star guys. Um you can always, I always put the link in the description box, to the entire scoop 100. So we've got the first, we're through the first 90 now. Um, the list is up on the site. Uh, the link is in the description box if you're watching on YouTube. But, you know, if you're, if you're listening to this, just go to BuckeyeScoop.com. It's on the left side, rankings, 2022 scoop 100. There's the list. Um, you know, feel free to comment on the site and tell us what your thoughts on everything. And if we can do something differently with how we kind of present this, but um really enjoyed doing this and we're we're just one episode away so thanks everyone for uh watching listening and uh we'll wrap this up here in, in a day or two and get to our, our number one player <laughs>